Now, George, we were just in, in the courthouse here, and uh, I, I heard, I heard, I heard the, uh, I heard the judge mention, or the opposition say, for some reason, you, because you were a felon, you did not have, what, the right to be an administrator? Correct. So, so, and I know as a felon, you, you couldn't run for office, if I'm, if I'm correct, in some states you can't even vote. And it seems to me that probably people who were felons might make the best judges because they know more, they know the law in a way that very few people do. And certainly they should be, have the right to vote after they have finished their crime because those people know what really is needed in law enforcement and civil judges and all these things. I mean, I'm being a little bit opinionated here, but why don't you challenge the right of a felon? You're a lawyer by prescription. You have how many, what did you say? You went to school for what? You have law degrees or law? Sure. How many law I'm, degrees? I'm going to. How many law degrees? Three, three, three. Three, from where? Right now, from prison, prison law school, what is it called? What is it? Uh, what are your law degrees from? College. From College? Which yeah. colleges? Marist. Marist, uh, New York State University, and Marist. So you actually have studied law, and I know your cases have been the matter we, during the dog movie. Some lawyer in the audience said they studied some of your cases, like maybe challenging the son of Sam Law, or, or what, I don't know what case it was he studied, but they said they literally discovered it for how long? I was in there. Six I just, months. Six months? Six months. They had to get all of the papers together. Oh, but I mean, but, but I mean so therefore, you're, you're, you've had an imprint on the history of law in the United States. Sure. As a person who is, what, operated by lawyer by prescription, which means they recognize your right to, to represent yourself or represent who? And I represented many people in, in prison and outside. But how about like in civil court? I think you were involved with a, a out, many, not alimony, many child cases, support. Many different types of cases. But yet you can't earn a living doing that because by prescription, as I understand it, they forbid you to like, you couldn't go out and you could maybe- Well, I could, would go to jail for practicing law if I wasn't by prescription. Okay, how words, about if you were a volunteer for some- I could do uh, pro bono work. Pro bono work. Yeah. Would it be- I, And I've done pro bono work with the Legal Aid Society. Okay. When they were out, when they had too many cases, they call on me. Oh, George, we need, um, we need a, a, an appeal brief done. And is, I, is it considered pro bono work if you say I work pro bono, but pro bono. I, I pro bono, but I, uh, I don't refuse honorariums for my services, but I, but I re, re represent you regardless. I'm not asking for one. I'm well, not. Listen, I have various matters that I do. I, I do a lot of legal work now. I'm in, in the writing a book. I'm in the real estate, so. I don't mind taking time out of my schedule because I have funds enough to take care of myself. But it's the legal system that's really messed up. And, and you're somebody that could. Why don't you? Why don't you challenge I've the law challenge that it. prevents you as a felon from being an administrator? To me, that's outrageous. You're obviously so. a competent legal person. Why can't you? Because they don't trust someone that's had a record. And I've gotten most of, uh, virtually all of my convictions overturned, all right? Bank robberies overturned. A, a lot of kidnappings overturned. But see, because I was involved. What were you convicted of? What convictions stand against you? Come on out with it. I don't have, really. The you only were in one, prison for John, something? Yeah, I got those convictions overturned. When I was with John, dog day, I got my bank robbery convictions, all of that stuff, overturned. You understand? But, but you're they still don't a, like, why are you a felon then? 
I'm telling them I'm not. I just told the judge. Did you hear me tell the judge? No, I was. They okay. told me to go away. That's why I'm asking you this. I couldn't hear it all in okay. the back room. I told the judge I am not a convicted felon. I'm not. A, a, I, I have no criminal history. You but understand? you were in prison for how many yeah, years? You could be. Listen, have you ever been arrested and they put you in jail? Once. Well, so do you consider yourself uh, a, a convicted person? No, the charges were dismissed. Well, what about me? I can't get. If, uh, my judge, my charges were dismissed. My conviction were dismissed also. So you know better but than me. But then how come you're a registered felon? I, or, or you're supposedly no, no, no. So you're challenged. You say you are I'm not a felon. I don't challenge. They told me I'm not a felon. I have records showing. But why I'm is not it a then your opposition lawyer saying that you're not, and no, you no, tell no, me no. that you can't no. operate by you can't be licensed as a lawyer because of your. I can be licensed by a lawyer now as a lawyer now. Well, why don't you take the bar and become a full-fledged lawyer? Because the, the felonies, even though I've gotten them dismissed, are so serious. Come on. Well, I mean, Jim, because you, you were accused and convicted of bank robbery, and then you get than, it over. A lot, more, a lot more than bank robbery. I, I've been convicted of Give murder, me the list. murder, kidnapping. I, I did the works when I was young. Why? Because they wanted... They wanted to kill me. They wanted to put me in Vietnam, and I refused. Then they wanted to give me the average person that would give five years as for refusing to go to Vietnam. Me, they want to give 20 years because I opposed the war. You understand? I'm, I'm like a, a... Was that just conscientious objection or based on being a Jehovah Witness or what? No, I studied religion, and I knew that going to war wasn't the right thing to do. And I was a conscientious objector. But no, they're going to make me go to war. And I'm the person you can't make do anything. All you can do is kill me. And that's why you've been fighting Warner Brothers for 40 years to try to get years. the royalty no, that you have I, right I, to? I fought first. I was the first person to fight the Son of Sam law. And eventually the United States agreed with my position. First of all, in, in that particular this particular case is like with my mother's case. They held, they were supposed to pay me $175,000, right? They didn't pay, they held it up hoping my mother would die. And okay, but I want I to go back with you the dog day result. after case because that's been going on for 40 years. Right. Supposedly, John, you have the legal right to his 1%, but they didn't want to give it to him in the beginning because it went to the people that were tellers in the bank. Then they gave some money to his wife despite the fact the court, as I call it, the court just wasn't gonna give it to you because they knew that you were involved as a, you were a felon. And then on appeal, you fought, and finally at one point, Warner Brothers offered you, look, we'll give you $20,000. What year was that? About four years ago. So that was 2013, maybe? And I refused. And you refused it because right. you felt you were really entitled to? A lot more. How much? Well, just a, 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 Let's say 300000 So that, that would be 1%, but then it would be compounded because you, when you don't make a settlement, you have compound interest at some outrageous rate. Am I wrong about that? Well. It depends on. Okay, I don't want to get in all that, right. but I'm just saying that you do have though, you, you have obviously claims that Warner Brothers either really felt you had enough validity, they didn't want to risk 180,000, maybe they really felt you might win 50, they offered you $20,000. Yeah. And you said no. Of course. And now you're back in a ping pong game with Warner Brothers who have attorneys. No, I, I have nothing to do with Warner Brothers right now. You're not, that case is no longer being, you appeal to the Supreme Court and lost, right? Well, no, you don't lose in the Supreme Court. They either take. They just don't take your case. They, yeah, they have okay. 100,000 well, cases. I, I really want this to be about you. Okay. And I, I really am impressed. You know, people think it's real strange because I call you, I call you everything from my fiance. And then I tell them I don't have to worry because he's married man and their wife and 50 years and and he's you know, sure. probably going to outlive him anyway, although that's questionable. And uh, also, I, I tell people that 
I have a, a good friend of mine who was a retired career bank robber, which I know is buttering up a bit. Yeah. You know, who's a Jehovah Witness. And who I I'm, study, I study. Well, I, got to, I went to a yeah. Jehovah Witness meeting with you, and yeah, I'll tell so people, I was amazed how interesting it is. And you have this incredible van that you've made into like an undercover vehicle, oh, which I'm man. going to talk to you after this interview about taking, taking us down so we can see the total eclipse in Columbia or somewhere in South Carolina. Because you need mobility after you get there, unless I can hire a plane, fly in somewhere and hire a plane that will take, take me up to see the eclipse. You haven't read these articles, you don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm saying this case here, yeah. The most amazing thing about this case is that they want to give me 175000 Then they hold the money until my mother dies. And this is going back to 2014 when I, right. when I, I know, signed I understand all that, but you know, I'm not interested in the intricacies and the well, details of administrate. I don't want to touch you short on that. I'm trying to make this an interesting interview for people about you as a human being, you as a really decent human being who does pro bono work somebody listen, who listen, people don't understand listen. how could I how could I know somebody like you because I'm an atheist you're a Jehovah Witness you know you're we have one thing in common we're mainly Irish I'm 50 percent Irish and so are you and part African American and part Cherokee Indian I want to get back to those Cherokee roots together which uh, so actually we're both mainly Irish so you you don't look as Irish as I do <laughs> Okay. Uh, although now you look into you now that you used to have a great afro. Now that age is getting to you, George. I'm seeing that hair. I would think that if I looked at you, I wouldn't be sure what you were. I think, wow, there's some some Indian guy, some guy from India. It's probably worth a bundle. Look at that. What's that hair tied in? Oh, is this the is this the discreet way to, to is your to hair hold my tied? Hair, yeah. Why know. does that? Because well, well, if you had if you, all, if you had an afro, it would be against you in court, right? Because I saw the oh, one yeah. black guy go up and he... Let me tell you something. Blacks have little rights in court. I know that. Con Ex-convicts like me have little rights in court. Your rights are like nullified entirely. Well, okay. I thank you very much, George, for this interview. Right. I'm going to put it on YouTube. Okay. And people that are interested, you can look up George Heath on the internet. Add dog day afternoon if they like or whatever or any other key tags that they can look up to find stuff that is shows you at your best if they're law students or anything well, like all that. All they have to do is hit my name George Heath and put dog in back on Google and pictures will come up. How, how many how many articles or how how many if, hit? If they went wanted to see some legal work, they, all they would have to do is say George Heath versus Warner Brothers and they would see a, a lot of cases that I've... I mean, worked. have you ever counted the number? Because when you put your name in, I get like 20,000. I have 40 years of legal experience with Warner Brothers alone. I have 50 years of doing law work. So, so I, of course, I specialize, cases, I'm a special, cases when I you volunteer in, pro bono, that doesn't I, make it I, into I, the I'm a search engines, right? Or does it? Yeah, I have many of my cases are in online in terms of okay. being able to look them up but I'm saying I'm a constitutionalist and many they're that, trying to get away the with the alt-right people claim they're constitutionalists who the people alt-right the racists that are down there knocking up don't you know the right wing that well the real conservative people I always say in they want the I specialize the in first amendment as a rights. listen I specialize First Amendment rights, and this is a, a major importance to me. Um, I tell judges what to do in terms of First Amendment rights. So I think that might be one of your mistakes, George, because no, you speak because you speak as a truth teller, not as a lawyer sometimes. Yeah. And I think judges don't ever think in terms of truth. They well, that's why they kicked the you off. The, that's why they kicked you out of the courtroom because they, they, they don't told want me to go seat, yeah, sit in the back because yeah, I identify yeah, myself because, as, and I've been yeah, writing they don't down. Want, they don't want to be revealed as to what they do or how they do it. So they tell you, let's sit down. Now, you know, but also, let's face it, look at me. Look at me, George, and you see me, it's running, don't, don't touch it. Now look at me, do I, I was the only one in the court, 40 people in that court, don't touch anything, leave it. 40 people were in the court, look at me. I was the only one not wearing a suit. I came today just to be there for you, and then you said to me, 
you know, go up with me when we go before the court. And, and you were up there. And, and I interviewed while. you outside the court, and the guard came over and told you that. So you were up there, and in they front thought of the I judge. was your client. Yes, they did. <laughs> they thought I, they thought I was a <laughs> felon, and I was a criminal. Yeah. Oh, imagine yeah. being mistaken yeah. for a criminal. They must have thought I was an old hippie who got a drug bust. Well, so, I mean, I'm dressed fairly decently. I didn't put any metal stuff on, you know. You know, so anyway, thank you very much, Mr. Heath. I made my little cameo appearance in the video with the famous George Heath. Now I can claim it forever. So right. we'll look forward to hearing more from you in the future.